possibly my favorite director, Krzysztof Kieślowski. I hope I pronounced that right for the Polish audience. And his last film ever was the third installment of the Three Colors trilogy. It's the movie Red. This is a great movie, right for analysis. This is a movie lover's movie. Let's take a look at what's in Red, why you should appreciate it, why critics have loved it for a long time. Let's do a little bit of analysis of this movie. It's really interesting, but a little bit hard to understand. So let's see what's going on in Red, coming up next. Now, as I said, Red is the third of the Three Colors trilogy, preceded by White and Blue. Kieślowski is a Polish director, but he interacts with France, he lives in France, and now he's doing movies that are based on France, you know, the three colors of the French flag, and supposedly the three main ideals of the French Revolution, liberty, equality, and fraternity. I think red is aligned with the ideal of fraternity, and you know, Kieślowski as a great philosopher on film is really probing so many aspects of this idea of fraternity, friendship, just plain old human relationships, what they mean, especially what they mean in the modern world, the late 20th century and the 21st century for us. Now, the plot of Red takes a little bit of time to develop. You don't really know what's going on until later in the movie. I think it takes 20, 30 minutes really to get things going. It's worth re-watching in this first 20 minutes to see what's happening or what's developing in it. Basically, there's this woman who, I guess here's the main plot, she runs into a dog accidentally. She's distracted in her car, hits a dog. She takes the dog to the dog owner, walks into his house and tells him, I hit your dog and he doesn't seem to care. Well, this chance meeting turns into a, a relationship, a friendship between this younger woman who's a model, a ballet student and a university student in Geneva and then this former judge. And as it turns out, this former judge is doing something illegal. He's spying on his neighbors by listening to their phone conversations. Oh. Je pense à toi. Tu es nu devant la glace. Mais c'est comme si tu le faisais pour quelqu'un d'autre, pas pour moi. J'ai envie de t'embrasser. Je me penche et je touche avec mes lèvres. Qu'est-ce que vous faites C'est l'endroit que tu préfères. Well, this bothers a young woman tremendously at one point, and she tells him, you should stop doing this. Well, you know, the judge justifies himself and they have a conversation, a little bit of a philosophical conversation about whether people are basically good and we ought to respect their privacy rights or whether they're not so good and whether, you know, they deserve to be spied on. It's very clear the judge has had a murky, rocky past. He lives by himself, he's isolated, and the color scheme for his house, every time we see it in this movie, is darker grayish and brownish duller tones versus you know the rest of the movie which is a little bit brighter and in fact has the color red all throughout the movie associated with just about everything we'll talk about what the color red might mean in just a minute but to keep going with the plot you know this judge eventually turns himself in and he does it for the sake of friendship with this young woman meanwhile this young woman has a lover who's in england and she's always trying to communicate with him via phone but we never see this man and meanwhile there's another man we see him and this is a parallel storyline and his name is august or august and he's going to become a judge he's in law school and we see him and maybe Maybe August should get together with Valentine, this young woman. Or maybe not, maybe they'll never get together. This movie is about chance meetings and what chance means in our world. Sometimes we have relationships with people, we run into them and we develop instant friendships with them. Why is that? Why does this young woman have a relationship and form one immediately with the judge? They seem to understand each other very well. The judge even senses uh, special things about this woman, like what's going wrong with her brother, and she senses things about the judge. How do they know this about each other? They have this sort of mysterious, uh, spiritual, perhaps, bond. And then one of the questions of this movie is, why do friendships or relationships like this form? Now there might be a little romance between these two, but it would be forbidden romance. It doesn't quite work. He's maybe too old for her. Now I know in the real world you can have older men fall in love with younger women and so on, but in this movie it doesn't quite happen. It, it's called on the internet sometimes, Red is, the movie, an anti-romance. 
I'm not sure about that, but then the question is, will this young woman get together with the other judge who is, in a way, a parallel of the older judge we see her have a friendship with? But the question is, will they ever, by chance, run into each other? Now, a world of chance is something that Kieslowski is always dealing with in his film, especially given that he made a movie called Blind Chance, in which you, you have that movie have three different storylines repeat a man either misses gets on a train he barely misses a train or he misses a train entirely and that one of those three actions leads to a different outcome a very different outcome in his life great movie blind chance and here it comes up in red where valentine runs into the older judge becomes friends by chance but then by chance she never runs into the young man who she might actually fall in love with. Red is about fraternity as we said and you know relationships how do they form and by the way in the modern world there are a lot of fake relationships. For example in the movie there's this woman who gives personalized weather reports personalized she acts as a friend you call her up she tells you what the weather is going to be in your area or wherever you're going to travel and she seems to be a friend but nevertheless here and this is a little bit of a spoiler she is the girlfriend of august the young judge and she ends up you know cheating on him and he is you know forsaken this is the problem with red the color of passion, erotica, and romance. At once, it's fiery and it, and, and it symbolizes desire. On the other hand, it symbolizes the anger that happens when we can't get what we want, especially in a romantic relationship. And the anger or frustration we can't get when we're alone, the judge, the older judge in this movie, is isolated. He's all by himself and doesn't seem to have friends, and he's spying on other people's friendly conversations and their romantic conversations. He's an outsider looking in, he's an observer, but he's also alone. Another sort of fakish aspect of this movie is the model, Valentine. She's in a photo shoot near the beginning of the movie for chewing gum, and you see her where a storm or wind is uh, created for the photo shoot so that she looks a certain way, her hair is blowing, and then you see the gigantic advertisement she's in peppered throughout the movie on a giant wall where there's traffic of people moving back and forth so you see her and she looks real in an advertisement as advertisements always do but you know it's faked and you've seen it being staged as she's being shot in the photo shoot this is contrasted with the final shot of the movie which i won't give away if you haven't seen red however the final shot of the movie is almost the same as this advertisement and the question is what's the difference i think the event in the end is supposed to be real and it's film capturing the real image of a reality of being swept up by a storm which is a symbol of fate right you are taken into a storm a storm happens you can't control the weather and then you know you're left to chance or maybe it's fate and that's what happens at the end that's real right and you should see who she runs into at the end of this movie but in the middle of the movie you have the advertisement it's the unreal image of the model and one of Kieslowski's great questions is with film and photography the medium of video and photos does it ever capture the real thing or tell us what's real or is it misleading us? If you remember, if you've seen the Decalogue 1, the big question in that movie, or, or one of them is, is the image anywhere, whether it's a video still image or an image on a computer screen, is it an idol that we worship or is it an icon that leads us to the truth or to reality? I think Kieslowski wants to bring that idea up, but sort of mess with it which is the image, does it lead us to truth or does it mislead us? And we always have this conundrum with any movie, with any film, with any photo. That's one of the aspects of this movie. So let's go back to a question of fraternity. What is it? Can we have real relationships with people we don't know? Uh, can authors or video makers be our friends even though they don't know us? Can uh, someone we run into become our friend? How does that even happen? What's the mysterious thing that happens when a person moves from being an acquaintance to our friend? That's another, these are other questions that come up in red all over the place. The way Kieslowski works, and this is the tricky thing about his movies, is he does it through images, through redundant images, repeating images. For example, in this movie, you get the image of broken glass. I think broken glass 
at least in one sense, symbolizes the lack of fraternity, or let's say the opposite of fraternity, which is enmity or hate perhaps between people. And at one point the judge's window is broken by his neighbors who figure out that he's spying on them. It's supposed to signify, you know, the relationships are broken, the broken glass. You see broken glass throughout this movie. Another image that comes up repeatedly are storms. I said there are fake storms in the photo shoot with the fan that's blowing uh, wind and the model has to look sour or sad, but there are real storms in this movie too. And so storms, as I said, represent perhaps fate, the thing you can't control coming up and doing stuff to you and perhaps changing your life in ways you don't even understand. If I were you as a younger viewer, I wouldn't start with red at all. In fact, red sort of sums up the whole Three Colors trilogy, as you'll see when you get to the end, as characters from the white and blue movies show up later in red. I would start with Kieslowski and work my way through chronologically his filmography because you're gonna see all kinds of references in his later movies to his earlier movies. And once you get to Red after watching the Decalogue, you're gonna have all kinds of aha moments or that you would call them you know, Easter eggs or some people in pop culture call them Easter eggs. I call them references. And since Red is the last movie in Kieslowski's filmography and he knew it, I think he's sort of summing up a lot of his ideas about desire, people being lonely, people, images dominating our lives and we're having to deal with imagery that we can't get rid of and in fact shapes us. You know, the lack of friendships and trying to become friends. The knowledge that, you know, our lives are linear, but we could take different paths through lives, except when we live existentially, we can only take one path through life. What if we could live other lives or li live our lives over again and take or make different choices? Literature or film gives us that option to play with, as in the case of Blind Chance, or maybe as in the case of Red. But you know, Kieslowski wants us to focus on those things that happen to us mysteriously. We don't know why, and yet they happen and they shape our lives. So this is a meditation that he wants to, of how I think, have us focus on, especially with Red, his last movie, and especially with the last thing that happens in the movie. You've got chance, you've got fate, you've got choice, you've got people running into each other. Big question then, is Valentine ever gonna get together with August or August the Judge? These are wonderful names to put together. You have desire with Valentine and Cupid and love and all that sort of thing, and August the law, you know, even a reference to ancient Rome and Caesar and Rome, you know, Rome, the Rome, ancient Romans combined these two things by making, you know, Cupid as a local god for the emperor, Caesar Augustus, and Venus, Venus, and Venus being, you know, a patron goddess of the Roman Empire and of Caesar Augustus. Then, you know, the Roman Empire combined these. I think Red is trying to see, can these two things go together? Love and the law. Can they fit together at all? A question in the Decalogue, a question for a movie about fraternity and friendship and relationships in general. What do you think about this analysis? This is a hard movie to analyze and I've thrown a lot of things at you, but ultimately Red is hard to summarize. It's hard to give a plot summary of and it's hard to say what this movie is about. I think books deserve to be written about this movie and about the Three Colors trilogy in general and about how this movie relates to Kieslowski's filmography. If you are a budding film scholar, I would say go into this and start writing about it. There's so much to explore here with Kieslowski's movies. Even just, his, you know, you take one movie, you can write a lot about it. So I have all kinds of ideas and I'm willing just to give them to you for free if you need something to write about, whether it's a thesis or a dissertation or something else like that. I think this movie and Kieslowski's filmography really deserve to be studied. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great content. Have a great day.